miles it out here. Wide open spaces, places to explore. The odd rabbit to chase. Makes you wish you were a dog. Speak for yourself, Rover. Tomorrow we'll put him through his paces for the trials. I know Kelly's the best police dog in the whole police force. That's why we have the trials. To show people what he can do. And what he can't do. Just because he can't cross a silly beam. It's just one little thing, just one. He's worked so hard at it. Yeah, we all have. It's the trouble with the trials. They don't tell you if you've got a good police dog or not. You don't find that out until you go into action as a team. We believe in you, Kelly. Yeah, just about done, I reckon, Kelly. Yum. There we go. Beautiful bit of bush tucker there. Lovely colour. Oh. Yeah. Whose idea was this? Yours. Oh. What was that? Ah, oh, just a cockatoo. All sorts of noises in the bush. another minute, we might be able to hear it again. Granddad! Granddad, wake up! What is it? Listen. Oh, it's just an owl. Don't worry about it. Oh. Never heard an owl sound like that before. Maybe it's not an owl. Maybe it's a flying saucer. You don't believe that stuff, do you? No. Oh. I do. What are you doing? I've never seen a flying saucer before. You can't go alone. Take Kelly. Not staying to find out. Come on. Hurry up. Hang on a sec. What's up? Don't know. There's a man out in the field, he's got hair and wearing red eyes. They're putting all these... Okay, 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 I'm awake. I'm awake. No, one at a time. There's a man out in the field. Two at least. And they've got some sort of truck thing. And a trial bike. And all these sheep. I think they're gonna steal them. Oh, a dangerous band of sheep stealers, eh? Well, you know what I think? I think you'll probably just scare one of the local farmers half out of his wits. Now, good night. I bet you all the sheep will be gone in the morning. Yeah, every last one. Mm. Night, Danny. Your woolly friends are still here. 
We must have scared them off. Yeah. Take a tip from an old cop. You can't go arresting people without evidence. No evidence, no case. Your granddad's right. We don't know for sure they were stealing those sheep. Oh, porridge is about ready, I reckon. Porridge? Great for gluing the body together first thing in the morning. I'm not really big on breakfast. What's up? Oh, Danny wants to go for a bike ride. Don't you, Danny? Yeah, we'll have breakfast when we get back. Well, don't go too far. And take Kelly with you. Go on, Kelly. Go with them. We've been running around for hours and we don't even know what we're looking for. Maybe we'll know when we see it. Come on, let's go back. Um, isn't it this way? <coughs> bike tracks. I bet this is the same bike that we saw last night. which way we're heading? Not really. Well, these are leading right back to camp. Are you sure? Well, come on. So what if it was the same bike you saw last night? You don't believe us, do you? Of course I do. You just haven't convinced me as a sheep stealer, that's all. I mean, he probably has a perfectly reasonable explanation for being in the camp. Sure. Well, did you ask him? No. Well, how can you judge if he's a sheep stealer? I mean, you can't tell just by looking at people whether they're good or bad, you know? It's like I said before, we need evidence. Or you need to catch him red-handed breaking the law. Come on, Kelly, back to practice. You do have a plan, don't you? What do you mean? What do we do if you find him? I'm sure we'll think of something. Hang on. Listen. Quick! Now where's he going? Well, there's only one way to find out. There it is.
Don't worry about that. Leave the buyer to me, OK? Yeah, well, is it all for tonight, then? No, not after last night. Too risky. Well, what are you scared of? Campus? What campus? I spotted their camp this morning. They probably won't even be there tonight. All right. Tonight, same arrangement. Five o'clock. Don't be late. What about the buyer? Listen, Landers, you're only a small cog in this organisation. You just do your job, leave me to do mine. Understood? Yeah, I just want my cut, that's all. Tomorrow! We outsmarted him. I doubt it. Will we tell your grandfather? He didn't believe us last time. Do you think he'll believe us now? Not likely. Unless... Oh, I hate it when you get that funny look. Unless what? Unless we catch him red-handed. I thought you might say that. Granddad. Not yet. What do you mean, not yet? We have to be sure they're stealing them. Do you want me to go up and ask them or what? Let's just get a bit closer. Oh, 
help, Ryan, Dad. Where have you been? It's them, the sheep stealers. The men on the bike, we saw them. They're stealing sheep. They get you away. We heard them talking. They've got a buyer and everything. We can still catch them. Joe. We know where they're going. If you kids are wrong. Okay, show me the way. Come on. Certainly up to no good. What are we going to do now? I don't know. But whatever it is, it's going to have to be quick, or they're going to get away. You stay here. Oh, but Granddad, I... No buts. This could be dangerous. OK, Kelly. If you want to be a police dog, now's your chance to prove yourself. Be careful. Kelly, look after me. Come on, boy. and watch. Look, Landers, I... We've been after that buyer for months, you know. They've been knocking off prize cattle and sheep and selling them across the border. Oh, nice little racket. Yeah. We nearly let them slip through our fingers, too. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Well, you went to know I was working undercover. Probably would have done the same thing in your position. And you two, next time leave catching the bad guys to us, all right? <laughs> you bet. Sorry about your bike. <laughs> yeah, no problems. And thanks, dog. His name's Kelly. Thanks, Kelly. He's a good dog. You look after him, won't you? You bet. I'll see you. 
I, uh, I thought about having him trained. Have you as a police dog? <laughs> what? What did I say? Study project is sure, Chris. Yeah, but it isn't fair. Yeah. You got Kelly helping you. Hey, don't go down there. That's where the hermit lives. Ah, this is a story, isn't it? No, my big brother told me it's true. He's got all this treasure hidden and he guards it with an axe. Yeah, I heard he died years ago. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Well, there's only one way to find out, isn't there? Unless you're chicken. Another charity case. It'd be a nice change if some of these people would pay their bills. Danny, you are going to the school dance, aren't you? No, I don't think I can be bothered, Mum. The dance is the big social event of the year for the junior classes, isn't it? Well, I guess so. Stupid! Stupid! Give the rest, jeez. Then why don't you invite some girl and go along? I don't know any that well, Mum. Well, go alone, then. Arrive without a partner? Are you kidding? They would brand me as a nerd forever. It's for you. Some boy. Hello? Chris has taken Kelly out for a nature walk. They should be back soon. No, I'm glad he's getting a bit of a run. I've been working him pretty hard of late. How's he going? Oh, he's improving. Oh, okay. He's got to be done slowly at his own pace. He can't be rushed. Something the matter, Joe? Todd Byron just asked me to go to the school dance with him. to me. One of us should go and have a look inside. Mm -hmm. 
You're it, Chris. Hello? Anybody home? What's a young fellow like you doing here? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. My friend said you were dead. <laughs> Not the last time I checked. Was that them I saw running away? Yeah, that'll be right. We're just out collecting stuff for nature study. Interested in nature, are you? Yeah, thanks. Well, so am I. That's why I decided to get away from people, live up here, where I'm surrounded by it. Good to see a young fellow like you appreciates it, too. You got a name, boy? Chris Patterson, and that's Kelly. Well, you can call me Sid. Now, make yourselves at home. Bit of a mess, but uh, I don't get many visitors. That's Henry. He's been with me for years. Does he always look like this? What's the matter with it? He looks really sick. He's got feathers missing. Yeah. yeah. He's been off his food for weeks. And he won't even talk. All he ever used to do was say hello, but now, not even a peep. There's a real good vet in town, Dr. Foster. Mm, I don't like town. Too many people. Can't remember last time I was there. But you might be able to help him. I'll take him in myself. You've got to do it, Sid. For Henry's sake. Where's Kelly? It's nearly time for his feed. Oh, Joe, look, I was just talking to Robin. Now, do you realise Danny's not going to be able to go to the dance because he hasn't got a date? Bad luck. What's it got to do with me? Well, you are the girl in town he knows best. Well, Mum, don't suggest it. Don't even think about it. Tearing his own feathers out still has me puzzled. But his main problem is sinusitis. I'll have to keep him here for a course of antibiotic injections. Well, Chris says you can make him better, so I'll go along with anything you say, Doc. Now, uh, what do I owe you? Well, I think under the circumstances we can waive the fee. <laughs> oh, no, I got no time for money, but I can still pay me debt. There, that ought to cover it. Oh. I couldn't possibly. I'll be with you in a minute, Mr. Spiker. I insist. You just fix him up. Sid, you really do have treasure? Ah, just a bit of a mistake, Chris. Well, then I'll be off back to the bush now. We'll keep an eye on Henry for you. Thanks, fellas. I'm grateful for your help. And you're both welcome to come up and visit any time you like. See ya. If you don't volunteer to go to the dance with Danny, he's going to be left out. Oh, give me a break, Mum. You're asking me to pass up the date with Todd Byron. But why are you so keen, Joe? I mean, you've never shown this interest in any boy before. Well, all right. It just so happens he was hanging around with Cynthia Dixon. Until they split up. Ah, the girl you've never really liked. No, Mum, the girl I can't stand. Ever since primary school, she's always picked on me. I always thought she was so much better. So, if you go to the dance with Todd, it'll really get back at her, eh? Something like that. 
Well, Joe, it seems to me that you have to choose between revenge and doing the right thing by a friend. But if I were you, I'd do some hard thinking before you make a decision. It was an opal, all right. That big. You know what this means? Yeah. <laughs> what? Use your thick head, Lester. All those stories about the old codger having a fortune stashed are true. Now, all we have to do is work out how we can get our hands on it. <laughs> that my mother said that I have to go with someone else. I can just see the smirk on Cynthia Dixon's face if she ever finds out. Look! Okay, Danny Costa, I hope you appreciate I'm giving up the chance of a lifetime. I'll go to the dance with you, seeing no one else will. Hey, you can stop acting like you're doing me the favour. Besides, who needs you? What? As a matter of fact, another girl rang, asking me to go out with her, and I said yes. What girl? Cynthia Dixon. Oh! <laughs> It wasn't my fault. I didn't know Joe was going to last me. I'm afraid it's all just been a terrible mix-up. Well, let's see what company does to cheer Henry up. Hey, Mum. This is the first time I've seen Jinx struck speechless. From what I learned inside, his shack is at the end of that track, right there. You sure he'll be alone tomorrow, Spike? Well, for crying out loud, Lester, if he wasn't alone, he wouldn't be a hermit, would he? Right. Just an old codger by himself. It's going to be like taking candy from a kid. Joe, it can't be that bad. Dad, I told everyone I'd be at the dance with a partner. Well, get another one. It's too late. They're already taken. Is it all right if I take Kelly to visit Sid? I suppose you better get used to someone else taking him for walks from now on. Because after the dance, I won't be able to show my face in public again. Ah, uh, Chris, Kelly, I was hoping you'd turn up today. Eh? You, what do you want? Yeah, I'll ask the questions. First question. Who are you expecting? Nobody. Just a boy and his dog. I invited him up for a visit. But I didn't invite you to, so get out of my house. Sure. Just as soon as we have what we came for, the apples you've got stashed. What are you talking about? Don't try that on me. I saw you at the fence. I saw the one you gave to her. Now, where are the rest? I'll never get them. Not for a million years. That's the way you want to play it? Those stones are around here somewhere. And if you know what's good for you, you'll tell us where. Otherwise, things are going to start getting rough. Okay. Do what you like to me. I'll still never tell you where they're hidden. We'll see about that. Yeah. Who's that? Here. Okay, stand by the door and grab him. I think he might come in useful. Mm -hmm. ah! oh, 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 oh. Did you see the size of that thing out there? Never mind the dog. It's him we want. 
Way did it go? Well, who cares? What do you think the mutt's gonna do? Talk. Well, maybe you won't talk to save your stubborn neck. But we've got your little mate here. And if you don't start cooperating, he could get hurt. Well. All right. Leave the boy alone. I'll tell you where the opals are. Don't tell him anything, Sid. It's worth it, Chris. Not just for a few stones. They're buried out in the bush. That's better. Grab a shovel, Lester. We're all going on a treasure hunt. So jumpy about. I thought that mongrel dog might still be hanging around. Forget it. He's long gone. We won't have any trouble from him again. Chris, well, he's out at the moment, Rob. Why? Was it important? No, I just wanted to get a message to old Sid about his cockatoo. But... <laughs> what is it, boy? He's been running up. Well, across country by the bears on him. Chris was with him. Let's go. Down this way, Maggie. He's found something. Track him, Kelly. Find Chris. All right, you mongrels. It's right there. And a foot down. Lester. <laughs> All right, Lester, let's get out of here. Get him! Get him. 
Nice doggy. Nice doggy. Drop it. Please. Good idea. Perhaps you'd care to explain what's going on. Well, I don't know how to thank you people enough. Hello, darling. <laughs> Pretty boy. Pretty boy. It was only when the sinusitis cleared up and I could see the eyes that I realised. Sid, Henry is a Henrietta. What? That's why she's been tearing her feathers out. Because she's been pining for a mate. And now she's found one. Oh. Phone code surgery. Oh, hi, Cynthia, it's me. What? Is he for sale? Sid, I give him to you. Oh, I couldn't do that. Well, to tell you the truth, he's caused no end of trouble. The neighbours would be only too grateful if you take him as far away as possible. Well, that's very kind of you. See what a good turn you've done, Chris? Seems like everyone's problems are getting fixed, except mine. Ah, hello, darling. What's the matter with you? I just got a phone call from Cynthia. I'm not going to the dance with her after all. Why not? Seems she only asked me out to spite Todd Byron. But they've made up again, so I've been dropped. Well, Danny, since both you and Joe have been ditched, I'd say there was only one logical solution. Ta-da! Here she is. that I don't think I've ever seen you in a dress before. You probably won't ever again either, so don't get too used to it. Come on, you two, you missed the beginning of the dance. Just make sure people don't get the wrong idea about us, OK? Remember, I'm only going with you just as a last resort. So am I. You don't reckon I want people thinking that you and I are... Oh, what an awful thought. Horrible. Disgusting. <laughs>
Over there. There's Kelly. I don't believe it. We're ahead of him. Junior, fix a hammer. I said the hammer. Poor oh, Junior. When I think it took 20 generations of intelligent dog to end up with you. to have to be the one to tell you this, Joe, but, uh... How do you compete with a turbocharged dog? Well, it wouldn't be so bad if he didn't look so pleased with himself. How's Junior going? Oh, uh, he's a slow learner. But we'll make a pleased dog out of your son yet, eh, Kelly? Uh, Granddad, we need some bait for Chris. I'll try the dam. Tell that brother of yours that a real fisherman digs his own worms. We did a deal. He hired me. And, Kelly, Chris is a real businessman these days. Come on, Kelly, we need some worms. You're not even close, mate. It didn't work. Would not, Chris. Would. Kelly doesn't bite. I know that. You know that, Spencer. Even Tomo knows that, but Robbo doesn't. He wouldn't pick on you if Kelly was around. So what's the deal? I supply Kelly's your guard dog. What's it gonna cost us? Very reasonable rates. That's Rollo's bike. It's okay. He can't pick on us inside. If you had Kelly, you wouldn't need to worry about going in. Only 50 cents an hour. I know everything about fishing dinner. My dad reckons I'm an expert. Oh, look, you'll win easily, Robbo. I caught 43 fish in half an hour once. Oh, you're a legend. One of them was like this big. And I wasn't even trying. Wow, that's amazing, Robbo. Oh, hi, Chris. Hi, Michelle. Can I have a packet of size two zero hooks, please, Michelle? And a can of Coke. Sure thing. Spencer, get three straws. Fish hooks? You're not thinking of going in the uh, fishing competition, are you? Anyone can. Oh, and what are you going to be? The bait? <laughs> oh, what a joke. You'd better bring your mummy along to help you change your nappy. Oh. Enjoy your drink, Squirt. Squirt yourself. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> what a beautiful sight. The Patterson's fallen in a heap. You think you're really tough now, Robbo? Picking on kids that are half your size. Why don't you find out just how tough I am, Patterson? Robbo, don't. You're not chicken. <sighs> so what you gonna do about it? Huh? Okay. Joe. <coughs> what am I fighting, Patterson? <coughs> you were your dog. Kelly. Okay. This time you win. Maybe when your dog's not around, it might be a different story, huh? Let's go. Do I have to tell you guys? Keep away from Robert. You know he's always looking for a fight. Chris, Spencer and I have decided to accept your offer. Starting now. 
We'll discuss it later. Hey, that's one dollar. That means we can have Kelly for two hours. Would you mind telling me what's going on? Okay, spill it. Well, I was always picking on Tom and Spencer. I said if Kelly's around, Robbie wouldn't bother them. You hired Kelly as a bodyguard? I need to meal the good fishing line for the competition tomorrow. Kelly is not just a trained police dog, Christopher. He is also a member of our family. And you wanted to use him to make some money? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Nice try, Chris. Thanks. Hi, Dad. Oh, hello, son. Give us a hand, will you? Yep. You're right? Yep. Oh, this deserves an ice cream. Um, as a matter of fact. Hey? I want to do a deal. Oh, a deal. Let's see, what kind of a deal? Dad, if I can have next week's pocket money in advance, I promise Whoa, I'll... whoa, whoa, hang on a second, son. What happened to this week's pocket money? I spent it on fish hooks. Chris, do you have any idea what would happen to our family if I kept on borrowing next week's pay packet? But this is special, Dad. There's this fishing line. It's the best. Ah, yes, of course, the fishing competition. I want to win it. Yes, and uh, you want to do that by throwing your money away on an expensive fishing line. It's how you fish that counts, not what you fish with. But, Dad... Listen, son, listen. You might find it a bit difficult winning against some of the older kids, so uh, just try and enjoy yourself, all right? I'm doing you a favour. OK, come on. I'm still good for that ice cream. Come on. That's it for now, Junior. And after morning tea, we'll have some more lessons, eh? Here. <laughs> if Dog Squad needed a champion muncher, you'd be in right away. No. Uh, Batten down the hatches, Junior. The family. How's it going, Dad? Oh, phoned up until a couple of minutes ago. I'll put this in the fridge. Mm. Well, thanks, but I can look after myself, you know, Maggie. You're going to fix something, aren't you? Hello, mate. Hi, Grandpa. Hi, Junior. Oh, don't you be too nice to Junior. He's not exactly top of the class this morning. I want him to learn, and all he wants to do is chase chickens. It's not his fault. No, I know, Chris. He's only a puppy. When you're a kid, nobody thinks you can do anything. Well, who's been telling you that? Everyone has. Even Dad did, too. Oh, you must have misunderstood me. Your Dad thinks a world of you and Joe. He doesn't want me to go in the fishing competition. He doesn't think I'd be any good. Well, well how do you feel about that? Maybe he's right. Hmm. Follow me. Yeah. That's the rub my father gave to me when I was your age. Never let me down. And now I'm giving it to you. Thanks, Grandpa. And I want you to enter that fishing competition and have a good time. But Dad said... Look, you know how to fish. You've got a good rod, and the fish don't know how old you are. So when you get back to your house tonight, remember that. Oh, come on, 
Joe, what's all the barking about? Oh, no, we've got a fire. Come on out. Down. Come on. Let's go. Maggie! Chris! things you lose. All we do. Well, we have to be grateful, Maggie. You can replace things, but uh, if it wasn't for Kelly, well, none of us would have got out. And if he hadn't gone back for Chris. Joe, where are we going to live? I don't know. Don't cry, Joe. Now, listen to me. You don't have to worry about where you're going to live. You'll come and stay on the farm with me, OK? Dad. Now, don't say anything, Frank. That's what we're going to do. Dad doesn't know whether the insurance will be enough to build us a new house. It's so depressing. Danny, what are we going to do? It could be worse. Dumb thing to say. When I woke up this morning, I thought the fire was all just a bad dream. But it really happened. We've lost everything. You don't have to stay. You'll miss the fishing competition. <laughs> what sort of friend do you think I am? The fishing contest doesn't matter. More worms. Kelly, don't you ever give up. 
No, and me neither. Chris? What? What's up? You were wrong. The fishing cop is important. We can't just sit around. Mom, Dad. Joe, what's wrong? What is it? I'm taking Chris to the fishing competition. Anybody who wants to come is welcome. Oh, Joe, after all we've been through. We've got to do something, Mum. We can't just sit around and be miserable. Let's go get bait. Give each other plenty of room, and if your lines get tangled, you can ask for help. Remember, everyone, don't sit too close together, and good luck. <laughs> Did you get enough of school during the week, Ryan? <laughs> I think the teachers have more fun than the kids on a day like this. <laughs> Look, um, sorry about your house, kid, but this is fishing, and that means war. Remember, any fish that are too small must be returned to the water. Beastly. Stop that or you're out of the competition. Achoo! How's Chris doing? Oh, fingers crossed, Dad. I just hope he catches something. Kilos and 20 grams. I think we have the winner. Hey. Hey. Well, uh, what about my fish, sir? Well, Robertson, uh, we're thinking of giving you a special award. Oh, right. For the best long distance fish caught. Must have come from the South Pole. This is frozen <laughs> solid on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> the trophy goes to young Chris Patterson. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Kelly. If I can win the fishing comp, Junior can become a police doctor. 
Maybe. Now that we've lived here, maybe Kelly can help Junior. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. I can use all the help I can get. Uh, it'll look fine once we get in the room. It's all screwed up. Put it, here. No, put it down. Put it down. Put it down. <laughs> That's bad luck. Not for long, it isn't. This family's had his fair share of that. No, where did I put my... <laughs> Maybe there's hope yet. Let's <laughs> <laughs> get the ladder down. Come on, get this inside.